الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل صالحا فأولئك يدخلون الجنة ولا يظلمون شيئا صدق الله العظيم The ayah that I have just recited to you comes from Surah Maryam I'm going to give you the translation of this ayah and then we will going to take a very different approach towards going into Quran and understanding Quran a slightly different approach than we traditionally take the meaning of this ayah is except those who repent <coughs> believe and do righteousness for those will enter paradise and no injustice shall be served to those people now if you notice the way the sentence starts it starts with the word accept accept in english language usually refers to something that has been said before and now you are saying whatever has been said before is one thing whatever i'm saying now is the other thing so you usually distinguish these kind of statements with the words like accept now let's look at the ayah before this so we're going to now take this bottom up approach usually we take top down approach let's look at the ayah before this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Who are the people who are not included in these? The ones who repent, the ones who do good deeds, the ones for whom will enter the Jannah. Who are these people who are not included in these? فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ And after them came people. أَضَعُوا الصَّلَاةِ They wasted their prayers. They neglected their prayers. وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهْوَاتِ And they were running after their desires. فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا So they are going to meet evil. Now, another statement that comes from the Qur'an, which starts out with the word, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ And after them came people. That's also usually a statement when it's uttered, when there is something that has already been said. And now you're looking at the second condition. Now let's look at What is being said after before this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ These are the people that are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He bestowed His blessings upon and they were from among the prophets. So if you look at the three statements that I've recited to you, the first one says that these are the people who will succeed basically. The one above that, these are the people who will not succeed. They will not succeed because they did not follow the footsteps of the people before them. Who were what? The prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as an example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned some of his prophets in the ayahs before. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ Mention in this book Ibrahim. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِسْمَعِيلِ Mention in this book Ismail. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِدْرِيسِ Mention in this book Idris. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ مُوسَى Mention in this book Musa. These prophets are mentioned by names. And there are other prophets which are also mentioned in the ayahs before who gain their prophethood due to some of these prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Musa alayhi salam and says, وَذْكُرُ فِي الْكِتَابِ مُوسَى And two ayahs down the road says, وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ مِنْ رَحْمَتِنَا أَخَاهُ هَارُونَ نَبِيًّا And Musa wanted some help. So, out of our mercy, we bestowed the prophethood on his brother Aaron. And then a few ayahs above, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرُ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ Mention my servant Ibrahim. who I created and made a prophet. But then he went through lots of trials and tribulations. But I'm the God of mercy. Remember a few ayahs ago I said what? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no injustice shall be served. So how does he put his blessings on Ibrahim? وَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ So I gave him the good tidings of Isaac, and after Isaac, Jacob. 
وَكُلَّنْ جَعَلْنَا نَبِيَّا And I made all of them prophets. Now look at it. This is the only example that we find in the Quran with four generations of prophethood, one after another. Ibrahim, two of his sons are prophets. Ismail and Isaac, Ishaq. Through Ishaq, his son Yaqub is prophet. Through Yaqub, his son Joseph, Yusuf is prophet. Four generations of prophets. After prophets, after prophets. And this is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says in these ayah, what? إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ Those who repent. وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And do good deeds. And between the two processes, amana They have to believe. Repentance connected to the belief system, connected to the good deeds. If you cut out the belief system in between, repentance and good deeds are useless. Because on the day of judgment, when we go in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when a person never believed in him, there is no point of asking him to give him reward. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, repent, believe, and then do good deeds. So I will going to enter you in the Jannah. Now let's go to the next ayahs. Now let's take the forward going process. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this Jannah and says, Jannati adnin. A Jannah? No. Jannat. Gardens. Adnin. Everlasting. Allati wa'ad al-Rahman. It has been promised to you by your God. Ibadahu bil ghayb. Unseen. Unseen promise. But believe. That's why believe is so important. إِنَّهُ كَانَ وَعْدُهُ مَأْتِيَةً In these, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always keeps His promise. Now we ask the Qur'an, what kind of place is this Jannah? And I'm going to give you three short verses. One, لا يسمعون فيها لغوان إلا سلاما Your ears will not hear anything that is ill. That is beyond the moral capacities. So now if you look around us, how many of us speak elegantly, eloquently? And our choice of words is a good choice. There's so many small words that are part of our conversation in English language and other languages that should not be used. They're inappropriate, but we use them. And we don't even pay attention to the words that we utter. We think it is cool to use those words. They were, those words you would never use in a professional email, in a job interview, in a professional speech. So those words, when they're not used in those places, that tell you something about those words, that they're not a good choice. So slowly and gradually, if you look, look at the way we are communicating these days, we use a lot of garbage words. Not in English alone. Pick any language. I tease my Arab friends here. I said, I have no idea what you guys are saying because I don't understand this Arabic that you're speaking. This is full of slang. Hey, what Arabic is that? So these are the kind of things that's crept into our linguistics. And some words are okay, but some words are inappropriate. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is nothing inappropriate in the Jannah. So if you ever, ever think of anything Will this be in Jannah or not? This is your tool. If it falls in good moral bucket, it will be available. If it doesn't fall in the good moral bucket, it won't be available. And where is the good moral bucket? In the Quran and the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, the most looked at verses in the Quran, two words. I don't even probably need to translate for the guys out here. Hurun Aeen. And the beautiful Hur, the woman that are given to you. Why? Because here you've been asked to hold yourself. Tilka Hududullah. These are the boundaries of Allah. Don't cross them. There is a lot of attraction. A lot of attraction at all ages. Doesn't matter. You will probably sometimes hear a 60 year old guy getting married. 70-year-old guy getting married. So attraction is there all life long. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sums of them says, and when you look at them, you may think that they're like well-protected pearls. 
كَأَنَّهُنَّ الْيَاقُوتُ وَالْمَرْجَانِ In another ayah in the Quran, Surah Al-Rahman, and if they were like rubies and corals, not pure, no impurity has touched them. Their eyes, their gaze, will not going to look at anybody but the one who that they are spouse of. Similarly, the spouse will also have a purity. Jannah is a place of purity. There is no evil in there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تِلْكَ, تلك الْجَنَّةَ الَّتِي تِلْكَ الْجَنَّةُ الَّتِي نُورِثُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا This is the Jannah that I will going to give to as inheritance, inheritance of Adam, to the children of the Adam. Why? مَنْ كَانَ تَقِيَّةً Because when you were here, living here, you were God-fearing. You were God-conscious. جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Because this is the good deeds that you were doing here, that this is the reward of it. And notice the word that I used over here. تَقِيَّةً God-consciousness. Now this word sounds familiar to you. Probably two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, we were witnessing something that we were constantly hearing. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ We have given you the month of fasting so that you will fast like the people before you so that you gain what? Righteousness. So righteousness, after believing, is the key to enter into the Jannah. And in the process of this month of Ramadan, you would have witnessed that there is a lot of push for good deeds. Good deeds. Do good. But the problem comes in when we create a little box and put good in that box. And to us, only what is in that box is good. We have forgotten to look outside the box. I'm going to give you some examples of goodness. Be just. Be fair. Be nice. Smile. Have a good heart towards everybody. Everybody. Now think about it like this. When it comes to the matter of Palestine, Syria, Kashmir, Rohingya, we are charged up. Of course, in those lands, everyday atrocities are committed. But at the same time, nobody stands up for those thousands of kids on the border of Mexico. What about those minorities who suffer in the Muslim-majority land? <coughs> How many of us in those regions go to those communities and see what their problems are? Yet we are in the front line when it comes to our problems. Why will the world stand with us when we don't stand with them? Even in the problems we are distinguishing religion. That's nonsense. That's non-prophetic t- teachings. When a person would come to the Prophet, he wouldn't ask for what is your religion. He will help that individual. And that is something we need to gain back. It is okay and easy to talk out loud in the hallways of the masjid, in your living room, in your family room about what is going on around us and we don't agree with it. But how many of us pick up the phone and call that senator? Call that senator who represents us in the Senate. What are you doing? What about my rights? I put you in office, not for this. Why are you not representing me? Why nobody is writing? Because the Ummah doesn't know how to write effectively. The Ummah doesn't know how to communicate effectively. How will this going to come? Through schools, through teaching. Everybody wants one goal, doctor. That's only one aspect. Engineers, lawyers, business owners, chefs, artists, teachers. Programmers, researchers, we need them all. We need all of these people. So we need to start concentrating on this next generation and tell them 
that your goal and your vision doesn't start and ends on the green dollars. Your goal and your vision is far more than that. You have been sent here to do what? Khalifatul Ard. So you have your part to play, a job to do. And other things will come along. But feel good in helping people around you. Don't be mean. Don't be self-content. Because it is all part of goodness. It is all part of goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a lot of opportunities. We are in a very blessed land because there are a lot of abundance of resources. Well, it's only up to us that how much we want to exercise and use them. And of course, our goal is success in the hereafter. Now think about it. When we walk in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He shows us our good deeds, which are huqoqullah, but in huquq al-ibad, the rights of the beings, there's nothing. What were we going to do that day? Remember, there are three rules to live our lives with. Three rules. The rights of Allah, the rights of the beings around you, and your right on yourself. Your right on yourself. That is also, there are three things that make up this triangle of life. So don't just concentrate on one side of the triangle because it's equilateral. Same sides, all count. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم